So I hear people say, oh, my crab cakes fall apart whenever I try and cook them, or oh, my crab cakes have got too much filler in them so they don't taste like crab. So I'm going to show you the perfect recipe for crab cakes right now. Here comes the recipe, so pause the video now if you want to write it down. I'm using fresh lump crab meat here as it has good flavour. It comes in good sized chunks and won't break apart too much when we mix it into the other ingredients. So let's get straight into the recipe. Get yourself a large mixing bowl and add a teaspoon of whole grain mustard to that. And then I'm going to de-seed and half one Fresno chilli. If you like it more spicy than that, you can add more chilli. If you like it less, obviously you can add less. But I'm going to cut this into a very fine dice. I don't want the seeds because I'm just looking for flavour here rather than for heat. And I'm going to use about a quarter to a third of a chilli. Next up, we'll add the zest of one lemon and one lime. Make sure you wash these first as they often spray these with a wax coating to make them look better. And when you're zesting these, make sure you rotate the lemon and the lime regularly so you're not getting any of the white pith as it tastes bitter. Now cut your lime in half and add the juice of half a lime. Now add a generous amount of salt and pepper. Some people will swear by using Old Bay seasoning. If you're gonna do this, don't add any salt or pepper. I prefer not to use it because I feel like it masks a lot of the other flavors going on here. Next you can throw in your breadcrumbs and one whole egg and then your Worcestershire sauce. And lastly we'll add some finely chopped herbs, so I'm using a small bunch of chives and just a couple of sprigs of dill. Don't go too heavy on the dill here otherwise it will just taste like dill but you do want it as a background note. Now give all of these ingredients a good whisk together before you add your crab otherwise it will break into small pieces. You should have a paste like this. Now once you're there you can go ahead and throw in all of your crab and just gently fold this together. If it is looking a little bit too dry you can go ahead and add some mayonnaise. Don't worry you won't be able to taste it in the end product but it is a good binder. And you just want it the consistency where you can bring it together into a small patty like this. Next up you want to heavily dust your work surface with flour and then take some of your mixture and form it into a rough circle. It really doesn't need to be perfect here, just shape it roughly, not pressing too hard so you break up that crab meat, but form a small patty and then press into the flour. And then flip that over and press into the flour again. Now take any round container that will fit over that patty and run it around in a circular motion like this. Press down on the crab cake, flip it over and then just run your bowl around on it again and you'll see it will form a perfect circle. And now just repeat with the remaining crab cakes. This recipe does make about four large crab cakes or eight small ones. So once they're all shaped, put them on some baking paper and into the fridge for at least an hour before you cook them. This will stop them from falling apart. So once the crab cakes are in the fridge, that gives us time to make a perfect side dish and that is sweet corn salsa. Here's the recipe now. So begin by finely dicing an onion. For the two portions I'm making, you only need about a quarter of an onion. For any of you that don't know how to do this, I'll put a link to my veg cuts video in the description below. But either way, just cut it as finely as you can, and then you can throw all of that into your bowl. To that, you can add your sweet corn, try not to throw it everywhere. And now a small amount of diced cucumber, making sure you've peeled it first and removed the seeds from the center, as they're a bit watery and will make your salsa very wet. And you want to dice this to roughly the size of the sweet corn. No need to go too small here. Anyway, once done, add that to your sweet corn and onions. And you can move on to your cherry tomatoes. And we'll just cut these all in half and then all of them into quarters. And again, add to your bowl. Next up, we're going to use another quarter of that red Fresno chili, removing the pith and then just finely dicing it as well as you can. And you can throw all that into your bowl as well. Again, I've removed the seeds, but if you like it spicier, leave them in and throw them in with the salsa as well. Now squeeze in half a lime, and now a pinch of salt and pepper, and we'll finish it with some very finely chopped chives. It's worth noting here that coriander does work really well in this as well. And now just give that a little mix together and leave it to one side until you're ready to serve. And last thing to do whilst those crab cakes are still resting, we're just going to make up a little sriracha mayo to go with them. So here's the recipe now. So this is really easy, but it goes perfect with the crab cakes. Just add some chopped parsley, horseradish, mayonnaise, and some sriracha with a squeeze of lemon juice to a bowl and give it a good mix round. Once done, put it into a little pot and leave aside until you're ready to use it. Okay, so now it's time to cook these crab cakes. So after they've been in the fridge for an hour, you wanna heat a non-stick pan with a couple of tablespoons of oil in it on about medium and place in two crab cakes at a time, making sure you don't crowd the pan and give yourself room to flip them carefully. 
After about three minutes, turn them over and they should be nice and golden brown. Give them another three minutes and they'll be golden brown on the other side. Take them out onto some paper towel and leave them to drain. And we'll just do exactly the same with the rest of the crab cakes and we're good to go. If you learned anything today, make sure to subscribe, drop me a comment, let's play.